round trip time is the duration between a host sending an outgoing packet and receiving its acknowledgement. Often it is double the one-way latency. So why are RTT measurements important? High RTTs can indicate congestion, abnormal configuration, or even the presence of attackers. Timely notifications of these issues in the network allow administrators to quickly address them. Users can also take advantage of telemetry systems when evaluating the performance of their current provider and make consumer decisions. Lastly, enterprise providers often commit to a maximum RTT in their service level agreements. Programs like Ping and Traceroute fall into the class of active measurement tools. They probe the network by sending specialized packets between end hosts and using them to calculate the RTT. However, these probing packets can add to the congestion of the network, thus slowing down regular traffic. Moreover, the network providers may prioritize these probing packets in an effort to hide the true, potentially poor condition of the network. The proposed solution in this presentation follows the principle of passive measurement on the data plane, that is, foregoing probing packets and applying measurements directly to the regular traffic by the switch. Here are the challenges. The switch will need an efficient way to track and match packets with their acknowledgements among the many flows of processes and across a potentially long time span. Unlike end hosts or controllers, switches tend to be simple hardware devices with limited usable memory, far less than the amount of data they process every second. Finally, since our language of choice, P4, is designed to be flexible and have a low memory footprint, many of the standard libraries and functions of other languages are not readily available. Moving on to implementation. Here we show the intuitive but incorrect solution built on queues. The identifier and timestamps of the outgoing packets are stored in a queue as they arrive at the switch. When the ACK arrives, the original packet is removed from the queue and the RTT is calculated as the difference of the timestamp. But this solution fails since queues depend on the ACKs arriving in the same order, rarely the case in real network deployments. Hash tables, on the other hand, provide an efficient storage mechanism for the identifiers and timestamps, while still allowing for out-of-order access to the packets. In this implementation, the keys are the flow tuples of the packets and ACKs. Incoming packets are hashed and inserted into the appropriate index along with the timestamp of arrival. When the acknowledgement packet arrives, it too is hashed and its timestamp is subtracted by the stored one, producing the RTT. The entry at this index is removed. The table also handles collisions, cases where two packets with different flow IDs hash into the same index. If the existing timestamp is expired, the entry is replaced. This is reported as a timeout. If the existing timestamp has not expired, then we attempt to push it into subsequent tables and drop it when all attempts have failed. Considering the memory limitations of a switch, we subsample the packet space deterministically while assuring that both packets and their corresponding acts are sampled.